Also, for yeah. those who um, sorry. All right, so maybe I'll start. So I'll just get rid of what I've been putting here. So again, this project is the one on the left. So, um, uh, yes. Three code, Android GDK code. Um, I'm starting from this GDK one sample. So um, if you would like to, you can open this up and. Um, we'll be doing some steps how to make this one turn into this one, which is simply doing the same thing, but in a Google Glass way. It, uh, the app does the same thing, shows the hello message. And um, let me actually show you the app um, first, and then that will make a little bit more sense what we'll be doing step by step. So if you are more um, willing to go straight with the final results, what we'll have at the end, you can just import GDK1, uh, GDK2 example here, which will be um, the one we'll be trying to achieve. Um, back to my class. Okay, um, have to restart it. Usually it doesn't mean it's restarting, but you know, just restart it. Um, screen cost. So this is my screen on my glass here, and um. This is, by the way, this is the final um, goal we are trying to achieve. OK, Glass. And this, um, that one is keep trying to pair with my, <laughs> I'll shut this down. Or off. Yes. Again. OK, Glass. So um, the final version will have uh, Hello World. Um, it's picking up what I'm saying. Hello world. Um, stop. Voice recognition, uh, voice trigger. So if I say, OK, glass, hello world, it will pick it up and start this um, app we're writing. And it will show in a way that um, is similar to other glass applications using the same font style and sort of things. If I tap on it, it will show you a menu. Before, um, Android version had a menu that you tap on a menu button, then it shows different menus, so like say hello. And if I tap it, it will say say hello. Not only here, but it will also read out the text as well. And also, if I scroll through different menu items, hello glass, um, or even I can click on say hello to me before we had an Android version opening up another activity and you type in your name and then you got back and there you, the hello world message was uh, customized to your name. In this case, I'll try to put my name usually. Oops. If I click then it will say gun. Um, it picked up the whole <laughs> sentence I, I've said before, but anyway, it picked up my name at, at least. So, <laughs> so um, it will um, pick, trigger a voice recognition um, activity, and then it will get back the results of dictation, and then customize the hello world message into like this. And then another thing we can do is, sorry, I stopped it. Um, since it's on the voice recognition menu, it's also on this menu when, where you tap once on the clock screen. You also get the same set of um, menus down here as well, all the voice um, triggers. 
and there is one um, that's hello glass which I shown you in the first no no yesterday morning and this one is actually hello world this one so it will show up here with an icon in this case I made a blue one make some sounds at the beginning the last thing I wanted to show you was take a picture and I'll take a picture and we'll use it as a background so that's the picture taken if we wait for a while then uh, I'll have to tap to offset so I tap it and it will use it as a background of that card um, the picture we've just taken and then just one more thing so again this is the menu of this app um, and we could also do like about um, tip on the about menu and it will show a uh, couple of cards that explains about this um, app like having some words and pictures together with words and pictures on the background and you can swipe back to get back to the main screen of there and reset um, the to the hello world so there are quite a lot of things involved here so I'm not sure if I could go through everything but um, um, we'll try to cover as much as possible we can do now all right so that's um, how we're going to change the Android version so what I'll try to do now is to just run again what I shown shown you just what I've shown you just now was um, the final version we are trying to achieve and this code is what I've uh, imported from where we left before for the Android version. So what I'll do now is just run this app on the glass, the same app we've ran on the um, Android phone, and just simply run it on Google Glass. So I haven't changed anything. I haven't changed anything. I just run it as an Android application, and we'll look what happens on Google Glass. Shutting down this um, app. And if we see. Oh, by the way, uh, when you run, uh, if, when you um, run an app from Eclipse, again, I think I mentioned this um, yesterday as well, but it's always, you'll have to have your screen turned on. Otherwise, um, although your app will run, it will your screen will be black and if you tap to make the screen back on then it will the home screen will take over so it's better to make sure your glass um, display is turned on and run the application while the screen is on so as you can see here I ran the same application here um, it's um, looks similar as it's on the phone it's even showing these icons which is an Android um, standard user interface and it's definitely showing that it is an Android box that's running so you can um, if you have an Android project going on you can straightly run it on the glass but as you can see here I don't see the buttons it might be cut off um, which might be at the bottom I still can um, no maybe not so anyway um, you can again from an simple Android project you can just run it on the glass but you will need some modification so back to my slide so before we go through that steps I would like to ask um, everyone to do this one more setting for um, the rest of the day this will be simple and I'm pretty sure you won't have any problems so as um, you've seen before with these resources here, um, you'll see it will appear as a phone app. It will appear as a phone app, although I've been using different theme here. Um, the thing is, um, this editor, you can choose different um, devices. Um, as you can see here so you can choose large tablet style device and see how it looks like and sort of things but by default there is no Google Glass setting um, yet 
So how to add this? Um, you go to um, Virtual Device Manager here. So if you are on the Eclipse, next to the Android SDK Manager, there is a small icon that looks like this and says Android Virtual Device Manager. And if you click on that one, you will be greeted with this um, screen. This is usually where you set up your emulator, Android emulator, um, to run your app on an emulator rather than on a real device. But in this case, we can div um, define different um, device configuration in the, here, and that will be used in the XML editor as well. So if you go there, and in my case, I've already added here. So, but um, in your case, you can click um, new device, and you'll be typing in um, different setups. But I'll just show you my setup so you can copy it. So you can type in name. Doesn't have to be Google Glass, but Google Glass makes sense. And the resolution of the glass is 640 by 360. Uh, screen size is not really three inches, but I found out if you put three inches, it's the closest you can get um, um, at the moment. I mean, in terms of how the UIs are laid out. So if you type in these values, I'm pretty sure these are the default. Um, you can choose D-pad if you would like to, but I, it's not really necessary. RAM, you can type in random numbers, but um, usually you can go with 5, 12 megabytes. And if you have typed in these fields here, I'm pretty sure it will pick up um, these automatically uh, with small, long HTTPI. Um, it's important to um, make sure this um, density is HTTPI, because if you choose different um, DPI, then um, the UI elements will draw in different sizes, and that will not really match with how it will look like on the glass. And please choose this button to hardware. Otherwise, on the screen, it will draw back buttons and home buttons and sort of. So it's better to have without those buttons to so choose hardware. And although I'm showing portrait enabled, um, I think you'll have to disable portrait so it will always default into landscape um, layout. And you won't need navigation there. And then you, in your case, you'll be maybe create or something. In my case, I was editing my existing one. So, and then the last step I think you'll have to do is to restart the um, Eclipse um, to make it appear up here. So uh, once you're done that, um, restart your Eclipse. And when you're back, you can check it if uh, your setting has um, saved by going back to that Android virtual device setting and make sure your um, entry is there. And once that's there, if you open up an XML layout, and here on the device, you'll see user defined devices and the one you've um, here. So if I click that, um, it will match a little bit more to the glass um, screen size, although it still has a bar here. The thing is that you'll have to also change the theme. And you can go with device default and no action bar with full screen. This Again, this setting is just only for this um, editing tool. So it doesn't affect anything about your app. But um, it's just to make sure. Um, it's just to set this um, editing tool to um, show the layouts closely, how it would it look like on the glass. So hopefully everyone got that um, there. So we won't be using this um, editing tool right away. So take your time as I go through the rest of the slides. So that was one thing you can do. Um, and those are explained on the slides. So hopefully that's enough. So as we are turning this Android app into a Google Glassware, what we are really doing is um, just um, optimizing the app itself to um, make it more friendly to Google Glass interface. And as you might remember, these are actually a type of emergence of Glasswares. So with GDK, you can create two types of um, Google Glasswares, which is one live cards, which sits on the timeline. And, and when you run it, it um, appears on the left to the left to your uh, clock screen 
um, and this lives within the timeline. So when you swipe that uh, swipe the timeline, your application will also get swiped and swapped with another card. So um, you can do some interaction, but they are limited to how the timeline works. Um, but you can still have um, live um, update, real-time updating content so that you can have um, richer content on this live card. And you can also, uh, from that live card, you can go um, to another activity and sort of um, other things you can um, create. The other option was emergence, which is um, taking over the whole um, control of the user interface. So it's not doesn't sit in the timeline, although it could be um, triggered to start up through the voice trigger message, and it's voice trigger. Um, but in this case, it's basically an Android app um, that runs um, and takes over the whole device control, um, but still looks like a glassware. And it is a glassware, a kind of glassware, I'd say. So just to refresh what we've talked yesterday, live cards works in this way. So if you're coding in Android, um, you're not really creating an activity, but a service that runs in background. And what your service does is insert um, as the glassware or the glass operating system to create a live card. So it will create, the operating system will create a live card and give you back access to that live card. And what you do is you update the view on this live card from your background service. So that's the main part. And as you tap on this live card, what usually happens is you'll be um, launching another activity, which um, will show the menu items similar to the other static cards. So you'll have to code that um, menu items as well. So that's how live cards works. And emergence is basically an Android app that is started up either from the voice trigger menu or a static card could have a URL, URI that points to your app so that you can start your app. And within your app, you can do whatever you want except uh, swiping down uh, will take back to the um, glass main screen. So except a swiping down gesture, you can do whatever you want in a way, whatever you want until you swipe back and get back to the timeline. So I won't repeat this um, since I've um, went through quite in details. So the first step you'll have to do um, to change your um, Android app into Google Glassware, especially the immersion app type of application, is to change your um, build setting to um, GDK. Of course, um, the app compiled against Android um, SDK will still run, but um, to use certain uh, features in, SDK, in GDK, you'll have to change um, that SDK to GDK. And then um, you'll have to remove the theme that um, you've been using in the app because um, there is a bug in um, the Eclipse IDE that even if you create a project to have no theme, it still adds a theme that um, is kind of system default theme. So you'll have to remove that part. and. Um, from there, um, and okay, oh, of course, you'll have to turn on debug setting on your glass and um, install your drivers. We've done all of those. So um, here's the steps what we'll be doing first. Um, so we'll first remove the theme from our app and then add a voice trigger to launch the, our app and add a touch input bit menu so that we can detect tapping on our screen to um, show the menu items and then um, use a, a voice recognition um, activity to replace the text input, which was we were typing in um, our name to customize a hello world um, message. So the first thing is to go to your Android manifest.xml and in the application, um, in the application tag, you'll see the theme will be there to the app theme, and you'll simply be de um, removing this. So let me do that right now. So if you go to Android manifest, this um, app theme is um, put there by default, so you'll have to delete that one. So once you have no theme at all in your um, app manifest, the um, glass um, 
operating system will use its own um, default theme, which will much look much more like um, standard Google Glassware. So before it looked like this, but once you've deleted this and run, run it again, it will look like this, which looks much more similar, but still have these buttons down here and sort of. And the next thing is to add a voice trigger for launching your application. So again, we will have to add something to the manifest again. So in your Android manifest, you add this intent filter uh, from here to here to your activity. So what I mean is inside your uh, project, there should be Oh, actually, I think I've missed one step. Ah, oh, yeah. In my slide, I think I didn't mention this. No, I didn't. Sorry about that. Um, one thing before what we have to do before is remove this um, launcher. No, not really. Oh, I got confused with the live card. <laughs> Sorry. You can leave this um, there. Um, just add, add the voice trigger um, XML um, items here. So in your activity, below that um, main launcher um, intent filter, you add an intent filter there. And this time is um, action and rename with that string. I won't. I don't like to go back and forth to that slide, so I'll just copy from here. Data plus, um, tutorial projects plus build manifest open with text file. So it's intent filter. Voice trigger, so from here to here. So that's the same um, thing that you see on the slides. So what we are really doing here is telling the Android um, system that this application can respond to voice trigger, and this is a specific thing for the Google Glass. Um, so um, you can see from the namespace that it's actually Android Glass that action. So and then. Um, what you have to do is to define the trigger um, phrase um, that you say after OK Glass um, as a resource. So to do this, um, and by, I've already put there, but you'll have to, as you can expect, it should be a file name called voice on the butt trigger in an XML folder. So if you go back to the resource, you won't see any XML uh, folder. It's, it's as simple as just you create one. So you right click on the resource folder and hit a new, then choose the folder, and then just you name it XML, that's all. And you'll have an XML folder here. So under that XML folder at the resource, you have to add a voice trigger.xml. Uh, by the way, resource IDs are, um, doesn't, um, has, even you have, this is, corresponds to the file name, it will not show you the um, extension, file extension. So you can assume since it's in an XML folder, it should be .xml. So in XML file, we'll create another new item, maybe new file. And then this time you name the file as voice on the bot trigger .xml. And click finish. And then now you'll have this voice trigger .xml in that folder. And now all you have to do is um, go back to your slide. And as described in here, you'll have to type in these um, words, which is basically one um, line defining this is the XML file and putting the trigger keyword, hello world, which will be used for launching your app um, that you say after OK Glass, and then you say this um, keyword, then it will launch your app. So XML. So in my case, I'll just copy over this file resource. Set it, 
copy. Um, if you are tired with typing as I am, you can, what you can do is simply download um, the final um, project, GDK to Hello World class, then that will have all the final files. So you can, once you add that, um, those error messages should be gone. So before in the manifest, you might have had an error here because that XML resource was not defined, but now it's gone because we just created this um, voice trigger that XML file. So once you've done up to here, if you run it on the glass, um, now the system will recognize your app as a, an app that you can launch from um, voice triggering so that it will show you, um, let me actually run it and show it um, to you. So what we did so far was remove the theme um, so that the default Android theme will be shown. And um, although it, it um, started up because I started up from the, the um, Eclipse, I can swipe back and go to the timeline and say, OK, glass. And then again, as you scroll down the list, you'll see hello world at the bottom. Um, and it picked up my, myself saying hello world and started the app we've just created just by editing that manifest file to add that trigger. And here, it's the same that still has a button that you have to choose. And if you go in this, um, I still have to type, but I don't really can't really type here, so I think we'll have to do is to uh, replace it with voice recognition later on. So that's there. Um, official, there are a set of vo official voice triggers that's allowed um, to be on my Glass website. So um, if you remember that website that had official um, Glasswares that you can choose and install to your Glass, um, to be registered on that um, site and to be go, go publicly um, available to the Glass users, um, you have to use one of these triggers, um, although it's not necessary um, for testing your app. So you can use hello world as just as I did or whatever crazy sentence you want to put in there. It will work in terms of implementation and system, uh, in terms of software, but it's just a policy um, that they, they don't allow other voice triggers other than this set. Um, they do have a form that you can suggest Google to add more official voice triggers um, um, when you register your app, but I think they go through a kind of reviewing process that they decide um, to restrict to one of those. The reason why they restrict to one of these um, um, triggers is um, because they don't want to populate too much on the timeline. And um, in case, in, in the way that, um, and to trade off between um, not populating too much on the timeline and also allowing various apps to be able to be vo triggered by its voice, what they're doing is if there's a, an application using the same voice trigger, what Google Glass will do is, in case there's only one app that used the, the same that voice trigger, it will straight the um, launch that app. If there is more than one application, like two or three applications using the same voice trigger, what the glass will show you is, um, even if you said like, for instance, if I say, okay, glass, take a note, and there is multiple note taking application, then what Google Glass will do is not launch one of the app, but actually show your show the list of apps that you can choose from. So in that case, it will show you the, show the name of um, the apps that can respond to this take a note voice trigger so that you can choose from. So anyway, that's uh, one thing you might want to um, know when you actually go public um, and register to the Google Glass, my Glass website. So we've done so that much so far. Um, I've shown you this uh, briefly yesterday morning at the first session, but um, just to refresh your mind, um, for um, now we are going to um, detect some of the touch um, interactions here. 
there are a couple of ways to um, consume touchpad interaction. And the first simplest way is to um, deal touchpad input as a key input. Um, of course, um, there are a limited set of um, um, gestures you can um, detect because it's um, translated into key input. And by default, Android system translates tapping as a key code under by D-pad under by center event. So if you're an Android programmer, I'm pretty sure you might be quite familiar with on key down, which um, processes um, key inputs like the home button. Not, uh, usually you cannot really do the home button, but if you had additional buttons like menu or something, it, the system will call back to this on key down method. And you can compare the key code it passed uh, to you with key event key code D-pad center. And this is uh, the event the glass operating system generates whenever it um, detects tapping um, on your touchpad. And swiping down, it will generate key code on the key code for back button. So it's treating as a, it as back button. And for camera button up here, if you um, click it within your application, then it will call you back with key code camera button so you can repurpose the camera button um, in your own way. Although um, Google might not be happy to use that button for other purposes than taking picture. So anyway, that's um, one way to consume that touchpad event. Um, more general way is to use this on generic motion event callback. So um, for Android programming, it, it, you usually use on uh, motion, on touch motion event or touch, I think it's touch motion event. Um, but it's just a different name of the method that's called back with this touchpad. And it's pretty much the same event that is passed on to you so that you can detect different um, touch events like where did it touch um, down or if the user lifted the uh, finger or if it did moved and it will pass you the um, um, coordinate of, uh, to the coordinate of the touch point as well. And then the last thing is once you've got those touch events, um, GDK also provides um, gesture detectors um, specifically tailored for um, Google Glass. So in Android SDK, there was also a gesture detector that was defined by the system, which is um, as a namespace for android.view.gesture detector. Um, please be minded of this um, new namespace because um, in GDK, they have both um, Android version of gesture detector and the GDK version of gesture detector. So when you import the uh, class, make sure it's this um, android.glass.touchpad uh, gesture detector. What this gesture detector does is um, it defines um, um, different sets of um, callbacks you can listen to. So let me actually do that um, here so that you can actually. Um, so in your source code, if you go back to our main activity, you might remember that we had these codes. And maybe I'll just put it at the bottom. Again, with um, maybe I'll have to scroll down further to make it easier for you. So again, Eclipse makes coding easier. So if you click source, override implementations, then it will show you um, some of the methods in the super class that you can override in your own class. And what we are going to do is, for now, we're looking for a key down um, method. And also, we'll look for on generic motion event, which is just on top of it. <coughs> and maybe that's all what we're going to do now. OK. Then we'll create those. Um, methods. So this method will be called back um, whenever there is a touch event, especially key down will be called back when there is a tapping. So if you remember, you'll have to, I'll just go with if then. If key code equals um, key event. And you can choose from, I think it's key dot key code. And as you type, it will show you some options as well. So I think it was key code D pad center. 
So that's um, the event that um, Google Glass translates touch, tap, tapping touch events into key event. So you can say, maybe we make a toast message here. Or we'll just go with log message, I guess. Log D. And then touch. You can use different tags, so I'm just using this tag. Add center. And again, if you, um, that's fine. I'll mention it later. So that's how to detect tapping um, events. Of course, you can detect key code um, back to detect back button uh, or swiping down, but we'll not do that right now. And for generic motion event here, what you can do is this, um, based on this motion event passed through, you can make a switch statement. And with the event object we've been passed through, we can have event get type. No, event get action. Sorry, it's action. Event get action equals motion event. So there are a couple of types of different actions, like tapping, uh, touching finger down is action down. And, oh, sorry. I'm doing this as an if statement. Case motion down. Can we do it? Can we go with it? And then break. Case motion event action up. Action up. So again, as you as you might have noticed, as you type along, it will show you the option, so it might not be that tedious. Maybe I'm wrong with the indentation here. Up. It's colon. And then I'll just define one more motion event. Action move. So if you are familiar with Android programming, these are all Android classes. Um, even including this on callback is actually for um, um, tablet devices that has a touchpad. And then we'll just log something. We'll say touch, action down, same wise, up. Move. And maybe here I'll give a little bit more information, like from the event, you can get x coordinate and also the y coordinate as well. So what we are doing really is um, we are just listening to this motion event and printing out a bunch of log information. So if I run it again, oh, before we go through this, um, it's better to delete those buttons um, in the layout before we play with the motion event. Otherwise, it will be spent by those buttons. The touch events will be spent by those buttons, and we might not get those. So in the main activity, we will get rid of the button, which is not really glass friendly. Hope it didn't break any code. Yes, it did. So that's because I was using that button here. I'll just um, comment out a bunch of codes that defines the handler for the button. Should be fine now. Yeah. So if I run it, so it will be much more neat. Um, and if I show you the log cat message, I may. And I'll create a filter with touch, with a tag filtering with log tag touch. It didn't print it out anything yet, but if as soon as I tap and oopsie. Ah, 
Oh, now we go. Okay, glass. Hello, world. As soon as I start tapping or moving my um, finger, you can see it's printing out a bunch of log messages here. Um, and especially, as you can see here, it's um, logging it as action down and then slightly moved and action up. But it's also translating to that as a tapping event as well, as a keypad. So you can use either um, detect these uh, motions and um, use those. Gesture detectors um, will not um, demo right now, but um, just to give you a brief overview, um, it's um, it's a matter of just defining that um, an object of gesture detector class, and then what you do is pass um, the motion events you've got from here, and to do it gesture. Detector. I will not implement anything, but everything, but um, in a new gesture detector. If you do that, and it will say it doesn't test, and then what you can do is uh, import it, source, um, what was it? Organize imports, and it will actually ask you. Right. Oh, now I got it. That's because I haven't changed my build settings to glass yet. So it doesn't know the glass version of gesture detector. So I have to. So, so far, I, this is also a good point to know. So far, what we've done was not really calling any methods in glass as GDK. So that was why we were able to survive with Android 4.0.3. But since we are going to use some classes in GDK, we have to switch to this um, things. Um, so just for those who are not familiar, right click on your project, go to properties. In Android section, you can choose different versions of um, SDK you will um, build or compile your project. So once you've done that, I'll try to import that class again. I'll just delete that um, default View gesture detector. And if I try to re import um, that class, it will show you actually two importable um, classes. One is Android one, and it's a glass one, so make sure you import that one. And I think constructor needs a context, so maybe I'll do that later on. You'll, you'll usually have to pass this um, here, but maybe it's better to do it like this. And what you do is um, you can um, define a listener and sort of things, but I won't cover that. Just uh, have a look at the final version of the code. And what you end up with will be you just pass this um, on motion event, um, this event up here just to the gesture detector. And gesture detector will call you back with um, detected gestures. So we'll not do that here right now and move on. So that's that. And menus. Um, if you remember, um, you might remember that um, we also had menu system in Android. So Glass is really using that options menu, uh, reusing that option, options menu. But um, it will show you in Glass in a Glass way without any modification. So, but the only thing is um, you don't have any. Um, you cannot really click the menu button on the either on the screen or on the device. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to trigger it by by code. So to do that, you'll have to call this method uh, from your activity. And the good, good point to call this method is when you detect a uh, tapping gesture. So how we'll do that is we'll maybe use this here. So tapping is translated to key code. You can also do here by um, detecting the gesture, but I'll do it in a simple way. So you just call this and that and on. No, I think open, it's open, open, options menu. So it's as simple as that, um, that you, when you detect a touch event, you just call this method and it will show you the menu. And then since um, usually uh, when you have to return Boolean, um, 
on a callback, usually it's you return true when you um, consume that event, so you don't allow the rest of the system to consume that event, so you just return true. Then if I run it again, and this time when I tap um, on the hello world screen, what it will do is show the menu in um, glass specific way. So we didn't change anything from Android. Um, it's just showing the menu items in a glass-like um, way. So again, if I tap on say hello Android, we'll, the, the, we, we did implement it already in the previous version with running on activity. So I'm running on Android, so um, it's there. So it's um, since we cannot re really have a lot of buttons on the screen, it's always good to have these um, menu items, um, um, use these menu items for triggering different um, actions. So some of the menu items we are now missing is um, those we had in buttons like resetting and um, customizing the um, hello world um, phrase. So what we'll do is just define one more item. And if you go to this menu folder in the resource folder, then you'll find the menus um, we've defined before. So here's um, the menu items that you've um, just shown. So simply copy one. And then, of course, you'll have to create new ID. So ask. And then the menu item will be called ask your as my name. And optionally, as you might have um, noticed, um, in most of the case, um, menu items also have small icons next to the phrase as well, although we didn't have for these. So what you can do is um, grab a, a small image and drop it to the drawable, and then you can define an Android icon type of Android type of, and say a drawable here with the file name. And it will, the icon will appear there. But for now, I won't do that. But um, the slide um, explains that, so you can add this tag to your menu item. And here's a link that um, there are some um, free menu icons that you can reuse from Google, so you can use one of those. And and there's also another um, callback that if you want to um, change the menu items, like the title of the menu item, or if you want to hide or show the menu items, it's it's the same how the Android. Um, phone applications does is um, you listen to this um, on prepare options menu callback, then you alter um, and it will give you the current menu items and you either show them or hide them. But I won't go through those details at this moment as well. So what we did was we've just added one item here as my name. And if we go back to our main activity, we are not doing anything with that uh, menu item, so it will appear on the screen, but won't be um, consumed. So if you go back to this options item selected callback, here are the codes that we do for um, what we do for um, these um, menu items. So we can just add one more resource ID and you can scroll down to what we've just defined, menu item, ask me. And then we'll do something here. Launch voice trigger. And then turn true. So voice input, um, again, launching the, voice, launching the app itself was just a matter of um, editing the XML. Um, in this case, we'll, write, we'll have to start an activity. Uh, it's a system, system activity that uh, is on the glass already. 
that recognizes the speech and then gives you back a list of strings so that you can um, use those strings for your own purpose. So what you do is, again, is um, launching an activity. So you, what you do is create an intent and pass the intent to the system by calling start activities for results. We are expecting to get a result from that activity, um, basically a string, a list of strings. So you have to use start activity for result method rather than just simple start activity method. And, and once you call this method, the um, operating system will automatically launch the uh, speech recognizer and then do the speech recognition by its own. And then once it's done, it will return back a list of strings to your activity. So customize. Um, and um, you can also customize the prompt. Like um, by default, it will just um, say voice recognition or voice detecting voice or something. But you can um, customize um, the prompt that's shown on the screen while it's detecting your voice. Like in this case, we might want to make it say, what is your name, so that you can um, expect you have to say your name. Then the recognized um, strings are returned um, in on activity results um, method in your activity through the intent. Um, and as a, one of the parameters of this method will be intent data. And inside there, you'll be able to get the string array of strings um, by calling this method. So let me go you and show you the voice input, which will be the last feature will be live coding today. Um, so what you have to do is maybe we'll just simply create a method called launch voice. Um, recognition. And this is just a method I'm just going to define it here to make the code more simpler. So that's just void. And so it's calling this method and this method I'm creating a new intent. Intent. I'm going to launch an activity so I have to create an intent. New intent. And then this time, I'm not going to specify the class name, but uh, specify this um, special ID or special um, intent type of action recognized speech. So I type recognizer um, intent, then action recognized speech. And then all we do is call start <laughs> activity for result, pass the intent, and request code again. Uh, this is to just a uh, user-defined number that you will get back when you when your activity is um, back on. So, as you might have, uh, as you might recall, we already had um, another activity in the Android version. We called another activity to show up to type in the name, and then we got back the results from that activity. So, if you scroll down. A little bit, there should be already a method that um, listens to um, the results of um, another activity code. And here you can see the importance of this request code. So since um, this method could be called by different activities you've um, called, um, it's important to check if the request code was the one that you've um, passed on. In this case, I used the same value, so I should change it to 200 for voice recognition. And here you can add another statement, if statement. If else. And check the request code if it matches the voice, the one I've passed when I was um, triggering the voice recognition. And then, of course, you'll have to also check the result code. Usually, um, the result code um, is result OK. But there is also canceled that when um, user cancels that activity, like just pressing back button without doing anything, then we'll recognize it as a cancel. We'll go with OK only now. Um, and, then, and then once it's back, again, you'll use these. Um, 
um, method to get the list of string array. So intent, get string array, list extra, and recognize the intent, blah, blah, blah. So, so as you can see here, that intent data is passed here. So get string array list extra recognizer intent and then and then extra results like this. Correct? Please? Yep. So and what it does is this method passes your array list of string. So But what we'll do is um, just pick the first one. So it's going to be first one. Um, stop doing that. Get the first one. Although it will pass you a, an array of string um, that, um, that at Google thinks um, it's um, what you said, um, the first one is the one that has the highest priority I mean, or highest um, probability. So I'll get just get the first one. And since this is, should be the name, I'll just reuse some of the code up here, which is setting the text views text, um, and say hello to there. So make the string name is the first one. And then I'll set the text view to the result, hello plus, name plus, only the exclamation mark. And that's the code um, that you'll all have to do. So I'll start it again. Five minutes to go. And if I tap, it will show you the menu. We added one more menu at the end, ask my name. And if I tap, it will trigger the voice recognition activity. Gun Lee. Oh, it picked up correctly. And then if I wait for a while, it will get back to my activity, and you'll get the uh, uh, string you've got there. And I'll do it in a way you want. So that's um, how we can change the Hello World um, activity into a more class-friendly way. Um, more stuff we can do is play sounds. Um, I, I demoed this. Um, Beginning at the beginning of this session, so playing sounds, uh, reading the hello world message, like um, um, not just showing it, but reading, uh, make the text to speech um, to speak out um, loud my um, hello world messages. Um, and then also take a picture with the camera to um, um, use it as a background of my card. And um, we can also insert static cards, like um, if we go here, you might have noticed that. Um, um, there was while I was demoing, uh, this static card was inserted into my timeline as well. So from your um, immersion app, you can also um, add static cards into your timeline, um, such as as a result, um, you can kind of have a, a, a static card as a, a record of what you've done with your um, immersion activity immersion. App, I would say. And then another thing you can go is uh, if you ref remember what I've uh, shown you before, um, we can also have an info page that you can scroll through different um, a set of cards like this. So we can go through that one as well. So what I'll do from now on is since we are running out of time, um, I'll just go through, I'll briefly go through how to do this and um, show you the code on the final project. So I'll leave it there and import the final project. So I'll import existing project. And this project is the GDK2 Hello World class version. And if you open it up, that's the final code that has all the text to speech and um, taking a picture and all of that. All, all of them are not much complicated, so please um, have a reread of the code later this afternoon. So playing sounds and text, um, first uh, 
you can play glass system sounds. You can use these um, um, methods. Of course, this is all. This is this um, is actually um, the method itself is Android um, SDK um, function, but I think the GDK defines some of the um, standard sounds as here, like disallowed, dismissed, error, and sort of so forth. That has that the, that identifies the standard sounds that um, Glass makes, like clicking sounds and sort of things. So you can call this method to make sounds. Text to speech. Um, again, this is um, an Android standard text to speech um, component you can use. So you what you'll have to do is create a text to speech um, object and you call the speak method of that object and type in the string that you want to speak out. Then that's all, and you can put in here whatever string you want um, to make the glass speak. And one tip though here is um, creating a text-to-speech object uh, sometimes takes some time, so um, it's better to create in, in advance, like in, in on create, so that it will be set up earlier uh, on, before you need it to use it. Otherwise, um, it will not, um, even if you call the speak, it will not make the sound um, if the object is not created. Uh, it's taking more time to create. And playing custom sounds, again, this is a um, standard Android way to um, play short snippet of sounds. You, what you do is you can drag and drop um, sound files, like WAV files, MP3 files, into resource folder. Um, in this case, under the resource folder, you have to put it in raw directory. And you put the sound file without, um, in this case, it's the file you put in that raw directory might have been sound1.wave or sound1.mp3, uh, but without the extension. And then this part is loading the sound files to the memory. And this part is playing the sound file. So you can use that method if you want to use that. I won't do the demo since I've shown you at the beginning of this um, session. Camera, again, we are calling the standard, we can call the standard, um, uh, we can do it in two ways. One is calling the standard system camera activity, and then it will give back you a, a data of image, uh, uh, actually a path to the image file it took. Um, and um, you can process that and um, load that image file, which was passed back in the on activity result. Um, just that, just same as how we did with the voice recognition. And the other option is to do low level access to the camera um, device. Um, in this case, you're using just standard um, Android camera API. So if you are, um, if you think you might need more features than the standard um, picture taking um, activity, system activity, then please refer to this um, document. Um, this is a brief code showing how to do that. Again, you create an intent to that um, image capture standard activity, and you call it with activity start activity for result. You listen to the activity results and make sure the request code is the one you've um, called for taking a picture, and you get um, the file path from this um, intent passed back, and then you'll have a picture, and once you've Called this, you'll have a string of path to the file, the, the picture that um, has been taken by the, Android, the glass system. And in many cases, I found out um, it's um, mostly enough to, you can, you actually get past um, two paths, which is the full sized image and a thumbnail of that image. And in many cases, I found a thumbnail of that image is usually um, enough, um, has a enough size to fill in the glass screen. So, and in many cases, if I use the full resolution um, image, then um, you might have to resize the image because of it's so huge. It's, I think it's three megapixel camera. I can't remember how many megapixels was this camera, but anyway, it's usually the uh, um, file in this path is too big, and usually you end up using the thumbnail. So that's just one i5 tip.
your picture in the flow. So in the card, and to add cards into the timeline, it's similar. I think I've shown this um, code snippet um, yesterday morning, so I won't go into the details, but it's basically creating a card object and setting text and footnote and accessing the time man timeline manager and inserting the card and, and a static card will be inserted into your timeline. You can also use the card object as a view so that you can use in within your um, um, view layout itself. The simple way is to just um, um, actually this code is incorrect. You have to call get view. Pretty sure it's get view. Let me double check. Um, um, I think we just yeah I'm pretty sure it should be get view so from the card object you can get um, Android standard view object by calling get view and then you can use it as a view in whatever method um, in Android that uh, you deal with um, to adding views on your screen but a view is a uh, abstraction of um, portion of screen um, such as um, UI elements and sort of things it might be two view. Two view, OK. Two view. Thank you. So that's how to use cards as view. Uh, um, to create a list of cards you can scroll through, um, you have to use this um, card scroll adapter class, um, which is similar to list um, scroll adapter, that, which is, ten, which is um, for Android. Um, phone um, apps. Um, it's quite similar to if you are used to using one of the list view features, then I'm pretty sure you'll be easily able to pick it up. Um, for those who are not familiar with those, um, please refer to the final project code. And I will skip those. So that's all I prepared for today. So. Today, um, to wrap up, we've only covered the immersion type of um, GDK application. So we didn't did anything about live cards that sits on the timeline and um, sits on the timeline next to the um, clock, which uses service, background services and so forth. We'll cover that tomorrow morning again. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure um, even with the immersion application, we'll, for your projects, we'll, you'll be able to think of um, fiddling with um, the sample project and turn it into your own um, project.